we're on the edge. We're on the edge of losing our wetlands. These unique habitats are disappearing from our land base faster than the Amazon rainforest is being chopped down. While that is sobering news, attitudes towards our wetlands are starting to change. The loss of our wetlands was not caused by some force of nature. It was a deliberate act. And when we chose to drain them, that was a value decision as well, right? We saw them as wastelands. We saw wetlands as areas that were in the way of uh, pro productivity. And in fact, in, in a previous career, I was an agricultural fieldman. And in those days, it was actually promoted by the government. Wetland drainage was a uh, uh, best management practice. In 2013, Alberta introduced a wetland policy, which is providing a roadmap to better wetland management. And I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I, you know, the people who work in the oil and gas sector, the people that work in the ag sector are good people. They want to do the right thing. Oftentimes they don't even know that there is a wetland policy and that they are required to do certain things through the Water Act. Education and collaboration are now the preferred way to work with agriculture and industry. This interaction is facilitated by a group of stakeholders. We have five different partners um, who come together. So Alberta Agriculture and Forestry, Alberta Environment and Parks, um, Environment and Climate Change Canada, the Nature Conservancy of Canada, and Ducks Unlimited. So essentially, all five of those partners have some sort of mandate around wetlands and waterfowl. And so working collaboratively together on projects and having a whole bunch of voices around the room on our different committees allows us to work more effectively. Um, and it also just adds a lot of capacity in a really engaging way. Where we have a lot of work to do is with the wetland loss. Um, you know, being Alberta focused, we have seen a lot of wetland loss over the years. And uh, we're really trying to make sure that wetland topics are um, enhanced even in the public and with folks working with wetlands so they understand the importance of wetlands because there's so many different functions that wetlands provide. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, wetlands are what uh, reduce uh, issues when it comes to flooding. Uh, these things will fill up and hold water and then release it slowly afterwards, as opposed to it all coming down at one time, which happens during flood events. Uh, wetlands are important for recharging groundwater as well. Water gets held there and slowly seeps into the ground and uh, gets into the aquifers. So wetlands are vitally important for controlling water, basically is what it comes down to. It, they can soak up water, hold it when it all comes down in a 24-hour period, and then release it slowly afterwards. So it's, it's something we in Alberta, we've had some experience with major floods lately and it's something as Albertans should be thinking about that uh, uh, we keep hearing that climate change is going to result in more and more of these uh, dramatic uh, events, uh, weather events. Wetlands are going to be key to try and reduce the impacts of events like that. Currently, Ducks Unlimited is undertaking a significant restoration project in the Blackfoot Grazing Reserve. Uh, yeah, so Wetland restoration is pretty simple. Um, the process of restoring it is simply uh, plugging the drainage ditch with a structure or ditch plug to hold water back to its uh, historical elevation. Yeah, the wetlands basically take care of themselves once the ditch is plugged. As long as uh, you get runoff in the spring, uh, typically they'll fill right up and you'll have cattails and sedges growing back in them in no time. This is probably the image that comes to mind when we're talking about wetlands, but it's these smaller depressions that are critical for nesting waterfowl in the spring. Yeah, so the, your seasonal wetland basins are the small basins. They're generally smaller than an acre in size. They might only hold 12 inches of water, and they typically appear in April when the runoff is on the, on the landscape and they're very important to uh, waterfowl, breeding waterfowl as they return, as these shallow wetlands are quite productive. Um, 
being the sunlight gets down to the bottom and they have a lot of invertebrates and stuff in them earlier than other ponds that might still have ice cover on top of them. It's hoped through the efforts of the Alberta Nawamp Committee being able to work with landowners and providing that kind of information will go a long way to improving waterfowl habitat. As you can see, this basin has been grazed by cattle this summer. This spring, it would have been a very attractive uh, basin with lots of emergent vegetation. The birds would have come in here and they would start to nest around here. So this is just one of those really neat sort of examples of where we're seeing uh, positive outcomes for, for livestock and, and for waterfowl as well. So it's, it's one of these really neat things that can really show that linkage between agriculture and, and, and wildlife here. The Nature Conservancy of Canada is also playing an active role in wetland conservation. We work with NAWAMP more on some of the policy work, some of the education work and that sort of piece. So a, a component of, of NAWAMP is the NACA program, the North American Waterfowl Conservation Agreement. And so NCC and Dex Unlimited are both delivery organizations under this. And so because we're NACA delivery organizations, that's also why we're, we have a kind of a seat at the table at the NAWAMP table. So through the NACA program, um, we have agreements set out this is with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Association, or U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And uh, we are, um, we kind of have targets. So we have securement targets, number of acres, number of acres of uplands and wetlands, because upland habitat is still important for many breeding birds. Um, so we have, and then we also have stewardship money that we're able to use to directly impact wetlands. If there is a reason to remain positive, it's that a number of conservation associations and groups are actively engaging in education outreach programs, as well as field projects that may help us to keep from losing our wetlands.